This homily may be recorded for quality assurance. (laughs) Brothers and sisters, as you can tell, I'm not Monsignor Frontiero. My name is Father Chris Gaffrey, for those of you who do not know me. And I'm one of the Franciscans up at St. Thomas there in Derry. This morning we hear Jesus giving us this advice to not be concerned about what we are to say when it comes to being persecuted, that we will be given the words, the wisdom of what to say in the moment. It's interesting that when we see Jesus in the gospel and listen to what he tells us to do, he will say, don't take any money, don't prepare what you're going to say. And what he is telling us goes against our own worldly way of thinking. Because our identity, typically, when we are walking in the way of the world, is that we have to know a bunch of stuff in order to do a bunch of stuff in order then to have a bunch of stuff so that we can finally be somebody. Raise your hand if you think that that's accurate, that that's how the world acts, right? And isn't that why the world looks at prestigious degrees, which basically only say that a person had enough money to pay an institution to call them smart? (laughs) Or when folks do certain things, Again, and then then they begin to think that somehow it's about them and what they do. Or when they have certain things, like the nice cars or the nice houses. Well, guess what? Crises can come up in one's life, and one of those three things can be taken away from one, which will affect the others, and then where is one's identity? It's gone. It's called midlife crisis. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why sometimes in midlife crisis, people think, oh, I got, I got to go buy this thing, or I have to go be with this person in order to find my identity. And it's not true. For the kingdom of God, things are different. We don't have to strive to be somebody. By virtue of our baptism, we are already somebody's beloved sons and daughters of God, the Father, King of an immense kingdom. And as members of Jesus' mystical body, united to Jesus, we then are co-heirs with Christ to all of the riches in heaven. And this is why we hear Jesus say again and again, do not be concerned about what you are to wear or what you are to eat, because your Father in heaven knows and will provide. We're talking heavenly riches. So we already have everything that heaven has and more. We have every grace that we need. So long as we stop striving after it and start receiving it from God. We are then empowered by God through the Holy Spirit to do the works that God has done. That Jesus said that we would do. And... We get to then know God here on earth, not in just an intellectual way, but rather in a way that the psalmist says when he says, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. It's a tangible, experiential knowledge of God, just like spouses have tangible, experiential knowledge of the goodness of their partners. Being with them, seeing them, knowing them. So this is why the Lord says to us, don't look to know a bunch of stuff. It doesn't mean we should avoid anything that teaches us apologetics, such as the Word on Fire or Brandon Vogue's uh, Veritas University. But the issue is this, that if we are not careful if we are not 
recognizing who we already are as beloved sons and daughters, we can even do holy things in an unholy way, and it becomes what St. Paul would call a work of the flesh. This is where some people would say, oh, you Franciscans, you're anti-education. No, we're not. We just say, don't divorce what you know by, from who you know. Make sure that prayer and knowledge are put together so that the knowledge doesn't puff one up and make one think, ah, now I can do stuff, and now I can have stuff, and now I can be somebody in the Catholic world, a very spiritually looking, worldly mentality. But instead, knowing God, doing our theology on our knees, Learning, yes, because we need to know who God is, but doing so in a way that we trust God for all things. Today, we Franciscans, we celebrate a bunch of Chinese martyrs, Bishop Gregory Grassi and some of the Franciscan missionary sisters of Mary, who were martyred during the Boxer Rebellion. Tomorrow, there are more martyrs that we Franciscans are celebrating. Nicholas Pick and companions from Holland as well as uh, Chinese martyrs from the 1600s to 1930s that were not canonized during the time that those who had been martyred during the Boxer Rebellion had been canonized. And we see all throughout the centuries the martyrs able to give witness. We think back only a few days ago to Maria Goretti. In simplicity, not necessarily in great lengthy discourse or in great lengthy treaties. They're able to witness to the faith. Maria Gretti is saying to Alessandro Serenelli, no, don't do what you propose to do. It's a grave sin, a mortal sin, and you can go to hell if you do this, and I don't want you to. The simple witness of charity when she's asked to forgive, and she says, yes, I forgive him with all my heart, and I want him to be where I am. This, brothers and sisters, is what it means to give up, as our first reading is talking about, trying to make things on our own. There's not a single thing that we need to become saints that God does not give us. Do we need faith? It's a gift from God. Do we need better faith? Jesus Christ is the author and perfecter of our faith. Scripture tells us that. So if we don't think our faith is good enough, it's God's job to fix it. Do we need charity, peace, patience, self-control? Those are fruits of the Holy Spirit, not fruits of our own effort. If there were fruits of our own effort, we might grow these little horns of pride and say, I've done it, I've become a saint, and fall immediately into sin. If we need further proof that God gives us everything we need, we need only look to the Eucharist that we celebrate today. If God is willing to give us himself, to continually feed us and to continually renew us in the graces of our baptism, augmenting our union with him, continually reanointing us with the same Holy Spirit that is with Jesus in the Eucharist, what grace won't Jesus give us besides? Is there anything that God the Father would deny somebody It has to do with either their own personal holiness or their own ability to bring others to know the goodness of God. If God is so good as to give him, give himself to us, not just today, but every day. The answer is, of course, a rhetorical, that there is nothing that God would withhold. Because he's already given us Jesus and gives us everything we need. And so today we ask God that that truth of God's super providential abundance for every grace and blessing that we need to be saints and great saints to witness in charity to witness in word and to witness even in mighty deeds since Jesus said that that would happen and it wouldn't be basically whether we were holy enough or not that those graces may be released upon us today and renewed in us every day. Amen.